hello, I want to talk about the Florida territorial slave laws. I came across this while researching the laws of Florida that pertain to the Second Seminole War. Found this interesting one, which I want to share with you. And I could probably make a series on the territorial slave laws of affecting the Seminole Wars. And I think I just might do that. But anyway, let's get into it. It's uh, no secret that the Seminoles were allied with the uh, what we call either the Black Seminoles, runaway slaves, that the Seminoles became a haven for runaway slaves in Florida and were a threat to the whole plantation economy of the southern United States, uh, Florida being a territory at this time, not a state, but it became a slave territory. So um, the Second Seminole War began in 1835 and but anyway let's jump into this because i think the slave laws have a big effect on the war itself and why people did the things that they did so anyway you can pause the screen and read the text if you need to i'm going to read along anyway chapter 930 number 19 an act respecting the hostile Negroes and mulattoes in the Seminole Nation. Whereas the present insurrection of the Seminole Nation of Indians has been chiefly excited by diverse mischievous Negroes and mulattoes living with the Indians in Florida. Uh, that's not really true, but that the Seminoles themselves were resisting removal and all the hostile acts that have been per perpetrated on them so it's not that they're just along for the ride and also for anyone who doesn't know mulatto is back then in that terminology was somebody whose parents were both black and native american some claiming to be free uh, now that's important where it says some claiming to be free because the territory does not recognize a free black man. If you're a free black man coming into the territory, you would have to become a slave. <laughs> so, But that's a discussion for another time. Others claimed as slaves by the Indians and others fugitive slaves, runaways from the citizen of Florida and the adjoining states and the descendants of such fugitives. And whereas said Negroes and mulattoes are known to have aided in the massacre, of Major Francis L. Dade and the forces under his command on the 28th day of December 1835 last passed and to have personally assisted in the perpetration of other atrocities and are now in arms against the good people of the territory. So, of course, that's one big fear in the plantation economy and the slave owners and the settlers is that the Seminoles are causing uh, the slaves to rise up. And this was this fear was not without justification because um, just a few years before in 1810, there was a slave uprising in New Orleans that killed several hundred people. Um, and at the same time, the Second Seminole War, there was a uprising, I think it was in Haiti. Uh, but So it was a very real <laughs> fear that the plantation owners had of their slaves rising up and causing an insurrection. Being in, enacted by the Governor and Legislative Council of the Territory of Florida, that any Negro or mulatto who shall in any wise aid a bet assist, comfort, or advise any of the hostile Indians or who shall attempt to resist, disobey, or escape from, or elude any of the military or civil authorities of the United States or this territory, or who, sh who shall be taken or captured from the Indians or among them by the troops of this territory, that's the Florida militia, during the present war on the peninsula shall be and is hereby declared to be a lawful prize of war and to be forfeited and reverse 
and is cheat as a slave for life to the territory of Florida and its assigns. This cheat is a uh, word from English common law that basically means that if there's no heirs of the state, so the property or whatever it is goes to the monarch or the state. So basically it's becoming that the slaves or uh, black Seminoles they captured uh, becomes a prize of war just as if it was a war in a sea and the Navy ship captured the ship of a, another nation and said, that's our prize. You know, we're going to profit off of that. And on report of the governor of the taking of any such Negro mulatto property or effects by a person, the governor shall forthwith take measure for safekeeping of such Negro mulatto or other property or effects and a direct sale thereof in such manner and on such terms and conditions as he may deem expedient, the proceeds of such sale after payments of all expenses to be paid into the territorial treasury. So the governor and the legislature have become uh, trafficking, human trafficking, uh, taking the slaves and selling them, taking the money, putting in the state treasury. The said proceeds to remain in the territory and be distributed by direction of the next legislative council of this territory in such manner as be deemed equitable and proper among the non-commissioned officers and privates who shall be called into the service of the territory and he'll serve in the present war until honorably discharged. So the Florida militia soldiers will profit from the bounty collected on the sale of these slaves. Uh, so, uh, you know, interesting on that. Section 2, be it further enacted that wheresoever any such Negro motto property effects shall be claimed by a citizen of Florida or any of the United States, the same shall nevertheless be sold as aforesaid but such claimant prefer, may prefer his claim to the next legislative council for said proceeds. So if you're a slave owner uh, and they captured and sold your slave, you can apply, I guess, for, for a refund or a payment to the territorial legislature. So you won't get your slave back if it's in this case. Be it further enacted that it shall be lawful for the governor of Florida or the commanding officer of any military forces of the territory to put to death any white person, Negro, mulatto, or Indian found in arms against the United States or this territory, or who shall aid, abet, assist, comfort, and advise in any wise any of the hostile Indians or Negroes engaged in the present insurrectionary war on the peninsula or who may be taken or captured from or among the hostile Indians and Negroes upon the unanimous findings on oath of a court of inquiry to be composed at least 12 commission officers, that such white person, Negro, mulatto, or Indian is guilty and shall be put to death. So if they capture any of the warriors, whether they white, be white, black, or red men, during battle, they can hold a court of inquiry and if they're found to be engaged in hostile activities they can be executed so that's pretty harsh uh, right there uh, as it says at least 12 commission officers well that's not easy to do because uh, we find out during the war that very rarely do they have that many commission officers in one place at a time they have enough trouble filling a court of inquiry over military affairs in St. Augustine. Be it further enacted that any person or persons who shall capture any slave or slaves in any wise abating, abetting, or assisting in the present Indian war against the inhabitants of the territory, whether the same shall be claimed by any individual or not, the person or persons so capturing shall be entitled to receive from the proceeds of the sale of every such man, slave, the sum of $100. For all other slaves, the sum of $50 each. So women and children are only worth 
fifty dollars each. <laughs> Men or warriors fighting are worth a hundred dollars. That's uh, multiply that times thirty to find today's value. So uh, as a bounty that the soldier receives, uh, if he captures a warrior, he can receive three thousand um, dollars. Section five. Three thousand dollars in today's money. I mean, oh, okay. Section five: Be it further enacted that any person or persons owning slaves or other property captured as foresaid shall have a right to reclaim the same, if said claim be, be made within six months from the time of capture thereof, upon paying to the person or persons so capturing the sum provided in the foregoing sections, and a Negro so owned as aforesaid shall not escheat to the territory or be considered a prize of war. So if they are captured, that the slave owner can get them back if they uh, do so within six months of capture, but they must pay the bounty of the person who captured them. And if any slave shall voluntarily surrender him or herself to his or their owner, or that any other person for said owner such slave shall be not construed to come within any of the provisions of the act it says or if you're a slave and run away or if you voluntarily surrender yourself to your owner uh, nothing more shall be considered and you shall not fall under this act this was passed uh, three and a half weeks after the death of major day on january 21st 1836 approved on 13 february 1836, so just a few weeks after the death of Major Day. Uh, very interesting, but then I was reading, well, you know, what were the effects of this law or what happened? So I go into the territorial laws of Florida and f find out that it was repealed the next year. It says an act to repeal, an act entitled, an act respecting the hostile Negroes and mulattoes in the Seminole Nation being enacted by the governor and legislative council of the territory of florida that the act entitled an act respecting the hostile negroes and mulattoes in the seminole nation is be and the same be declared hereby repealed so the law was repealed almost exactly a year from when it was passed by the territorial legislative council that's interesting well it's not for any reason or any humanitarian reason towards the escaped slaves it's probably purely for the benefit of the plantation owner i think uh, that's my guess i'm not a lawyer so i'm not giving a legal opinion but i'm thinking the reason why it was probably repealed so much is that the slave owner actually had to pay the bounty of a slave that's recaptured so it could actually cost him a lot of money at least uh a hundred dollars per warrior and uh, maybe uh, 50 to a couple hundred more dollars for his family if they were apprehended with him. So that's interesting. So that would be my guess why this act was repealed. And of course, during the war, uh, there was a, a fear that the escaped slaves, the black Seminoles, were just going to massacre all the settlers in these different depictions that I'm showing on the screen of uh, just hacking to death all the plantation owners, burning their houses, dancing around the fire, taking the, the babies from the women, and just doing those horrible things. How dare they uh, incite an insurrection? But uh, very interesting is, is this whole subject. Um, Here's another woodcut, you know, just afraid of uh, Indians and Negroes massacring whites in Florida in January 1836. So this is uh, just the prevalent fear among the settlers that they're just going to be massacred by these Indians and Negroes. Not that they aren't doing the same to the Indians. So anyway, very interesting subject. You know, hopefully in the future I'll get into some of the more of the territorial laws of florida and explains that if you're a person of color you have no other choice uh you can either 
be a slave on the plantation, or you can fight with the Seminoles. And if you're captured, it's going to mean either death or you're sold back into slavery, which would probably end up as a worse condition. So the options were grim. And no wonder they fought so hard against the United States. And uh, that'll be it for now. I think it'd be an interesting subject to talk more about all these territorial laws and how they affect slavery and the Second Seminole War.